is headquarters. And there's school there. Let me see Sada. Say hi. <laughs> I'm gonna go past the sign in a minute. The beach is right there. Beautiful colour of the water. God's love goes overboard for you. God's love goes overboard. Can't you see God's love for you and me? He sent his son, now we're all one family. Mercy goes overboard for you. 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 Mercy goes overboard for you.
Here we are at the Adventist School. I mean, <clears throat> here we are at the Adventist School. And we're just gonna come and run <clears throat> some puppets. A puppet show, including the health talk with the puppet show for the our Adventist kids here on the island. Well, 
story is about a man who was really good. And it's also about three people who weren't so good. Now, we're going to need somebody who gets hurt. This, look. Oh, that man. He's all dirty. Oh, I'm going to go. I'm going to walk over here because I don't want to go near him. No way.
time for lunch. And now Anna went to have her lunch. So she went off and had her lunch and she had a pancake. <laughs> yum, 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 yum. But all those germs were going into her mouth. Oh, it could get better. She woke up the next day and then she went to swimming again in the beach. She went climbing the coconut tree. She hustled the coconut tree. And she went playing in the playground. And then, but then she needed to go to the toilet again. So she went to the toilet. Bang! <laughs> <laughs> but then this time, she went and Miss Water came along and washed all her hands. I'm water! <laughs> and Water washed all her germs off. Water washed all her hands, on the stomach, on the shoulder, washed all the hands off. I mean, <laughs> all the germs off. <laughs> And now Anna was able to have lunch. Thank you, Water. <laughs> Anna went to have lunch. She had pancakes. She had donuts. She had sweet potato. She had donuts. <laughs> and now Anna was so happy. Her stomach was happy. She was able to play more. Why? Because she could wash her germs away. Yeah, Anna jumps for joy. Puppet. 
pals.
person who could really use some help along the way. Ask if you can help him out and serve him with a grin. And God will bless you over and abundantly, my friend. Share God's love with everyone you know. For God's love makes the whole world grow. Share God's love through each and every day. You will find it's fun to give away. Yeah. You will find it's fun to give away. Yeah.
lid of your heart and look inside to see what is in the future. Amen. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 7 is going to show us what is in the future. Verse 1, our uh, chapter 1 and verse 7 says this. Behold. Okay, it's our last one, so let's go to here, so. One, two. Behold, he coming with clouds. He's going to break his eyes out. And he's going to roll back his eyes out of scroll. The voice of the army is going to pierce the grave of his mother. The voice of the army is going to pierce the skies. You will be able to see Jesus come and the clouds of death. I'm going to invite you now. Jesus is coming again. Ready. Jesus is rich. Are you coming? So we found out some of the areas of rescue man. And just as, as the destruction of Jerusalem was fulfilled, all of these prophecies that Jesus has prophesied of the earthquake, of the famine, of the pestilence, and of the false Christ is also going to be fulfilled. Our question to you tonight is that are you going to be there and get here with me? Can you say to my look for me? Or I am going to be there with you. As I wrote a simple song tonight in a few I'm going to ask a simple thing to do. If you can bow your heads and close your eyes and picture the words that our brothers have been saying. So close your Close your eyes and open your
John chapter 11 and verse 11. Chapter 11 verse 11 says this. These things said he, and after that he said unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. The Bible explicitly shows, or the Bible clearly shows, that a dead man, that a person that is dead, sleeps. Jump down to verse 2. Uh, sorry, jump down to verse 14. Verse 14 says this. Then said Jesus unto his dead, plainly, Lazarus is dead. So he says first, Lazarus sleepeth, or he sleeps, and then he says Lazarus is dead. The same thing. He sleeps and he is dead. Verse 15. And I am glad for your sake that I was not dead, to the intent ye may believe, nevertheless, let us go unto him. So Jesus is trying to say, hey, now, hey I'm kind of happy that I'm going to go. Because you know why I'm going to go to go? It's because I will show you a miracle so that you will believe. Okay, verse 37. Oh, verse 35. Come down. Oh, verse 34 says, And said, Where have you laid him? And they said unto him, Lord, come and see. And verse 35 says, Jesus wept. Now Jesus didn't cry because he lost his friend. Jesus simply cried because he knew even if he raised Lazarus from the dead, that the, the, the Jews around him and that the Pharisees around him will still not believe that he is the Messiah. And that is why he cried. He knew that he can get Lazarus from the dead. But the reason why he cried is because people will still not believe in him. And so the story goes on in verse, come down to verse 39. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinks, for he had been dead for how many days? Four days. And verse 40 says, Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldst believe, thou should receive the glory of God. And then the story goes on to verse 44, 43, And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus came from the grave of death. And the reason why he said, Lazarus, singular, come forth, is because if he said, come forth, everyone that died from then would have come up from the grave. So he specifically said, Lazarus. That was a perfect example of what is going to happen in the future. And I'm bringing this to a close with two more things. The Apostle Paul wrote a very important to a church called the Church of Thessalonica. And the book of 1 Thessalonians turned in, the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, he says in very important comforting words. 1 Thessalonians Chapter 4. Which chapter are we going to read, everyone? Chapter 4. Stay with me. Stay with me. Two more texts. Two more texts. First Thessalonians. Chapter 4. We're looking at verse 15 and verse 16. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Verse 15 and 16 says this. For this we say unto you, by the word of our Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. And verse 16, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So the dead who are in the grave sleeping, the dead whose dust have gone to the ground and the breath of life have gone back to God, shall be raised first. And verse 17 says, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. And then verse 18 says, a beautiful passage. 
says, wherefore, what does it say after that? Comfort one another with these words. Now the Bible doesn't say, hey, comfort one another with the words that our loved ones are in heaven. No, no, no. The Bible doesn't say that, well, hey, comfort one another, that our loved ones are in another place, but waiting to go to heaven. No, no, no. The Bible says, comfort one another in these words that Jesus is going to come soon and that he is going to raise the righteous unto salvation. Amen? Amen. One more passage of scripture, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, our last passage of scripture. He wrote a very important letter to the church of Corinth. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And let's look at verse 51 to 52. Uh, 51 to 54, as it brings to a close. <laughs> verse 51 says this. Behold, I show you a mission. We shall not go sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. At the last time, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruption shall put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Faith is swallowed up in victory. Oh, we count this verse 55. Oh, then, where is thy sting? O oh, bread, where is thy victory? Jesus has conquered death at the cross. And he's turned back and he's told him, hey, death, where is thy sting? And he's turned back to Greg and he said, hey, Greg, where is thy victory? Death and the grave are defeated foes. And the devil is also a defeated foe. We must understand that he is a loser. He lost the battle at Calvary's and we know that one day the dead is going to rise on the grave. They're going to be caught up in the air to meet them in the clouds. And our question for you today is simply this. Are you ready for Jesus to come? Are you faithful in all that you do? Have you fought a good fight? Have you stood for the right arm um, and have others seen Jesus in you? So as Sister Catherine, Christine sings the song, I'd like to ask that you would please bow your heads and close your eyes. Our sermon is finished. And we want to meet our brother. We want to see Jesus face to face. And so please listen to the words of this song as Christine sings. Meditate on the words. Ask yourself a question. Are you with Jesus?
I'm not going to ask the people or anyone to come forward or anyone to stand. I'm going to ask a simple for you and ask this question. Do you want to be ready for Jesus to come? You've heard the message tonight. You've heard the message on Monday night in the car park. We are all sinners and fallen short of the glory of God. We heard the message last night in the car And Jesus wants to come back and rescue us from this dying earth. You've heard the message tonight in the resurrection car. Jesus is going to come back and raise all the loved ones from the dead. Take us home to heaven. My question to you tonight. Do you want to be ready for Jesus to come? Every head bowed and every eyes closed. No one's looking. If you want to be ready, if you just raise your right hand, just to show that you are ready, you want to be ready, nobody's looking. If this is between you and God, you want to be ready. You see the hands of those that have raised their hands. You see my hand, and Lord, I can't wait for that day when you will break me. The sky open and Lord, the back like a stroke. We can't wait for the day, Lord, when your voice will pierce the grave and that the dead and crushed shall rise first, and those which are remain shall be caught up in the clouds to meet you in the air. Oh Lord, we can't wait for that day. And Lord, you see the hearts of those that have raised their hands, and you see the hearts of those that have. Lord, I pray that you will bring them, and Lord, I pray that you will draw them closer to you, that they may be ready for that great day, that great getting of life. Lord, bring us back tomorrow for another powerful message on of inconvenient truth. May God have some safety tonight. For I pray for them in the precious name of Jesus.
to take the 